Hi guys, it's Steve from Featherlight Studio and today we're talking about building a Nikon cinema rig that can run the camera and all the accessories all day long if necessary. Let's check it out. So today we're on set and we're backstage at a musical production called Nine. There's a lot of people and a lot of cast and crew to consider in this. There's a lot of moving parts. So we need to be able to go at a moment's notice when the cast and crew are ready. And we need to be able to go from a tripod setup like this to a handheld setup to follow action. And then we need to go from a handheld setup to a gimbal setup. And then from a gimbal back to a tripod setup. And we need to be able to do all of those things relatively quickly without getting hung up on any of the components or the wiring or anything. So a lot of this has been tested over about the last year and a half and they look great on paper. You, you order them off Amazon and it looks great on a spec sheet and then you get it into your own setup and you realize it doesn't work at all. So this has been the result of quite a bit of testing and trial and error. So let's take a closer look at each one of the individual components that went into creating this Nikon Z series camera build. It's important to note that this cinema rig build doesn't include a follow focus as most of the lenses for the Z-series cameras are fly-by-wire and can't be manually set. Instead, we'll be relying on the autofocus and tracking, which has become quite good in the Z-series cameras. So this system breaks down into six basic components. The first is the matte box system. The second component is the handle and the monitor assembly. Our third component is the audio system we'll be using. This is a Rode Wireless Go. That's our wireless audio system and lav mics. This is an extremely compact and portable system that you can place just about anywhere. Otherwise, most of the audio for this particular gig will already have been recorded. We'll simply use this as scratch audio to sync later. The fourth component is our power delivery system. This consists of a V-mount battery and our power delivery plate. It's got our connections for power, DTAP and USB on the right and left sides respectively. And the fifth component is the camera and camera cage itself. This particular cage is a small rig cage made specifically for the Z series cameras. And we're just using our gimbals ARCA quick release plate mounted on the bottom of the cage. And the sixth component is our adjustable height rail mount system. Let's take a more in-depth look at each one of these components. First, we bought a couple of inexpensive 12 inch steel rails from Small Rig. And then our next component is the Canvate adjustable rail mount system with the Arca Swiss plate quick release plate on the top. This adjustable style of quick release plate is really important because this allows us to ensure that the lens itself is always in the dead center of the matte box opening. That makes changing lenses a lot easier. And the last piece in our rail mount system here is simply an additional quick release plate from Canbate. We've already taken the release plate section and put it on the bottom of our adjustable mount. And we've already taken the base plate part and stuck it on our tripod. This simply makes it super easy to go back and forth between a handheld mount and a tripod based mount. The next component is kind of running the show, and that's the camera cage itself for the Nikon Z series cameras. This covers the entire camera and it adds a ton of different mounting options. At the time, our particular camera cage didn't come with a NATO rail. So the very next thing we got was a small NATO rail from Small Rig, and this was just a small part that can be added to any kind of camera cage for any manufacturer. And it simply allows you to add top handles and other accessories that comply to that NATO rail standard. This NATO rail came with small spring-loaded brass stops on each end that keeps the handle from sliding off accidentally. This simply attaches to any one of the contact points on the camera cage itself. It comes with all the hardware, including the Allen wrench to attach it. Small Rig makes a variety of different Z-series camera cages that are full cages like this now, and several included the natal rail built into the cage itself. So I'll leave the links in the info section below, and you can check out all the different models currently available. The only other modification we made to the cage was simply to zip tie a small HDMI mini to full size adapter cable to the side of it. This just makes cable swapping so much easier and really reduces wear and tear on the camera's HDMI connection. The next component in our system is the power delivery system. And this is important as it supplies power for the camera and all the additional accessories all day long if necessary. Our power delivery is broken down into two different components. The first is the power delivery plate. This one's made by a company called Subphoto. On the side here, we have our two USB ports. We have our V-mount battery release and the important power on and off switch. In the center, we have our V-mount 
mount itself and the connectors. And on this side, we have all of our DC power outlets for our accessories. And above the DC outputs is our DTAP connector, rounding out all the power plate connectors. The first thing we're gonna do is remove this bracket. And the reason why is that it's not machined very well. It doesn't line up to the standard NATO rail assembly width. It's just a little bit off. We've tried several different power delivery plates throughout this entire build cycle. And this power delivery plate has some of the best feature sets available for Nikon users, except for that one problem. However, these screws, they're gonna come in really handy in a future part of this build. So watch this video to the end and see what we end up using these screws for. For the time being, we're gonna set them aside and we're gonna take this and we're gonna chuck it in the trash. And we're gonna replace that bracket with a very inexpensive and very well machined one from Small Rig. This is basically the exact same bracket, except it is manufactured to exacting standards and fits our power delivery plate as well as our NATO rail assembly mount perfectly. After we've confirmed our fit, we simply swap the bracket and the screws out onto our power delivery plate and we're ready to go. Most V-mount power delivery plates like this come with a whole host of accessories and cables, and we're gonna need some of those to make this system work. If we look through the included accessories, we'll see a variety of different cables as well as a dummy battery. This particular dummy battery is made for a Canon LP style battery. So great for Canon users, but not so much for us Nikon users. And it's very difficult to find a power delivery plate that powers Nikon cameras at all. But we can use this included coiled cable as the power supply to our monitor system as it takes 12 volt inputs and the two connectors work perfectly. Also included are a variety of other camera connection cables. However, we're only interested in this one particular cable. This is gonna be powering our camera full time. And instead of using USB power, which unfortunately out of both the battery and the plate itself goes into USB power saving modes, these cables are gonna allow us to run a dummy battery directly into our Z series cameras instead. And we're gonna do this with a power adapter and charging assembly from a company called Kaimaru. The reason this is important is that if you have an older style charger that works with your original Z6 or 7 series cameras, they will not work with the new series two cameras. This battery and power charging option from Kamaru, including the dummy battery and its connector matches the new Z series seven and six style cameras exactly, including the embedded chip required to make the series two cameras work. While the standalone battery and power options of this unit are handy and we'll use them in future builds, the only thing we're really concerned about out of this particular setup is this dummy battery connector itself. And the reason why is this connector on the end just happens to fit this connector from our SUP photo power delivery plate Exactly. It's the correct dummy battery and the correct cable and connector for the new Nikon Series 2 cameras. And as it turns out, it's nearly impossible to find a correct dummy battery with the included encoder chip that will work with the Nikon Series 2 cameras. The upside is that this combination and this power delivery system will also work with the original series cameras as well. So one set of connections work with all of the cameras combined. Part two of our power delivery component is the V-mount battery, and these are definitely not all created equal. It took us five different battery manufacturers, both expensive and inexpensive, as well as several different power delivery plates before we found a combination of fit and performance that would actually power the camera all day long if necessary. The battery we're using here is a BP-160 and it's from a company called Rytrick. This provides enough power to run the camera all day long if necessary. It's got an LED power indicator you can clearly see from a distance. And on the other side of the battery, it has both a D-tap and a USB port that can be used for additional accessories other than the power delivery plate. In addition, it's one of the few V-mount batteries that comes with a full three amp charger included with the battery itself. This really helps to reduce charging times when you're on a tight schedule. In addition to great performance, it's also one of the few combinations that we tried that have a very secure fit on the power delivery plate. There's no movement whatsoever. It doesn't slide off in any orientation, completely upside down. It's still a totally secure fit. Our audio setup for the Cinema Rig is extremely simple, attached directly to the cold shoe mount of the camera cage itself. It's simply a Rode Wireless Go. We have both the Go and the Wireless Go 2, 
and it can be attached to the front of the NATO rail mount when we're not using the handle. That makes this very convenient as we can see the front readout. The dual version makes a great two people interview setup or documentary work, and it even makes a quick and dirty wireless boom pole setup if you need it. But because we're shooting this like a music video, the audio for this is already completed. We're just using the single version for on-camera audio that's scratched to sync and post later. Our fifth component in the Nikon Cinema Rig build is our monitor handle and mount system. This is from a company called Nice Rig, and it now includes the natal rail and mount with the handle. So that saves you from having to buy another piece that we had to when we first bought our camera cage. We're using it with our Free World 7-inch monitor, but if you have a Ninja 5 or a Black Magic, it all works the same. Our monitor swivel mount that we're going to be attaching to the cold shoe of the handle itself is from Small Rig, and we've tried a bunch of these. This is by far and away the most secure. It also keeps the monitor at a level position, which is very nice when you're in the field and you need to tilt it back and forth constantly to adjust your viewing angle. It's built like a tank and it works great. It's quick to assemble and makes it very convenient once it's attached to the front or the back cold shoe mount of the handle itself. You get full tilt convenience in the field that's easy to use. It comes with an additional short 15 millimeter rail for other accessories and you can swivel it around and it'll stay in the position that you put it in. This is an extremely secure setup. And the final component in our Nikon Cinema Rig build is our mat box. And this is where we're gonna to get to use those two screws that we talked about earlier in a really important way. The mat box is the DP3000 M3 swing away mat box from Futka. And these have been around for a while. It comes with two short 15 millimeter rails. These can be mounted on the side of the mat box for additional accessories like a follow focus or a monitor setup, but we'll get more into that when we do a complete review of this mat box. And while lens mounted mat boxes are all the rage right now for portable setups, they don't work very well if you have a host of lenses that are super wide angle and may not have a threaded filter size to mount them to. It comes with a host of accessories, First is a complete set of foam O-rings for each one of your lens sizes that is so much easier to use than the drawstring bag types that you may have seen. In addition, you get a complete set of flags, both a top flag and two side flags. The top flag is really the only flag you ever really use on a regular basis, but the side flags are easy enough to store in your gig bag and they attach and detach very quickly for the few occasions that you need them. It mounts directly to our two rail systems for the mount that we had built earlier, and then here you can see the foam insert. This simply pulls in and out for all the different sizes that they give you. The foam rings are pretty durable and we pretty much just end up using the one size most of the time. On the left side of the mat box, as you face the back of it, you can see the two set screws for the different four by four filter holders. One of them is rotating. So if you have a polarizer, you can rotate the effect and the other one is set, which you could use for a black pro mist or perhaps a neutral density filter and they slide out and the filters mount directly into them and slide back in. Once they're in position and the thumb screws are set, the filters are mounted in there very securely and it's very difficult for them to fall or wiggle their way out like some other mat boxes. Once the mat box is mounted onto our 15 millimeter rail assembly for the camera, the set screw for the swing away part can be undone and then the entire mat box itself simply swings away from the lens. This makes changing lenses on the fly so much easier, especially if you have a large selection of lenses or you have longer lenses that take more time to swap out. This can really speed that process up when you're under the gun or on set and you don't have a lot of time between takes. The top flag simply unfolds and attaches directly underneath the two blue set screws. And this is really the first area of the mat box that starts to run into problems. This is what most of the reviewers had problems with. And that's simply because in order to adjust the tension that holds the flag up, you have to use the included Allen set screw. This is totally impractical in a production environment. Even if you could find a way to secure the wrench to the rig or the mat box somehow, there's simply not enough time on set to do this every time you want to make changes to the flag position. So it's time for a trip to the hardware store and the solution to this problem turns out to be a relatively simple one. We found a small knob that was open on both ends and then we found a metric Allen screw that was the same diameter as the one on the mat box. We found a spacer and a set nut to hold the whole thing together. So for about $6 in total parts, we've created a knob that's long enough to extend past the mat box. And you can see the assembled one here on the right hand side. Next, we just remove the original mat box bolt from either the right or left side, whichever works for you, and replace it with our little pre-built knob we just put together. 
From here, the top flag assembles easily and quickly, secures with the thumb screws, and now we have a completely adjustable top flag for our mat box. And finally, this is where we get to reuse those two screws we took off our original power delivery plate build. And with the addition of a couple of short spacers, these screws are exactly the same size as the screws that go in to our side flag holders. So just like we did with the top flag and its Allen set screw, we're gonna do the very same thing with the left and right flag holders. We're gonna remove the bottom set screws from each one of them and replace them with these ones that came off our original power delivery plate. Once our mat box set screws for both the right and left sides have been completely swapped out, we now have a quick and easy way to assemble the side flags and adjust them when we need them. So the number one complaint about this mat box has been solved with the simple addition of swapping out a couple of screws. It allowed us to use some screws from our original plate and then a couple that we put together from the hardware store it makes this a fully functional mat box that's easy to use, quick to adjust, and the flag positions stay put dependably where you set them, especially when you're moving this thing around or doing handheld shots. Now that we have an in-depth look at all six of the components that go together to build up this Nikon Cinema rig, assembling each of the components is quick, although we never tear the rig down completely, as once it's set up, it's almost always used and stored in this configuration. The camera cage and its assembly simply mounts back to our rail system that we started. Next is our power delivery plate system with its attached cables, our V-mount battery, once those connections are made, we can connect our audio system again. That's simply plugging it back in. From here, we make the connections to the camera with the USB power supply directly from our power delivery plate, as well as making the audio connections to the camera's preamps. And then we simply mount the entire thing back into the cold shoe mount on the camera cage. We adjust the position of the V-mount battery to allow access to our Nikon's monitor and touchscreen and mount our monitor handle assembly on the top of the rail that we assembled earlier on our camera's cage. From here, we connect the HDMI connection that comes directly out of camera, as well as connecting power to our monitor. And the final step in assembling our Nikon Cinema Rig build is to attach the mat box back to the rail system. And now we have a fully adjustable flag that's ready to go, as well as side flags if we need them. Now that our Cinema Rig is complete, we can go back and forth between our gimbal mounted shots and our tripod mounted static shot simply by connecting it to the quick release plate, making our monitor connections, and now we have a completely portable handheld rig that can also be set on a flat surface. So that's a quick look at an affordable cinema rig that you can put together for your Nikon Z series style cameras that can dependably power all the accessories in the camera all day long if need be. Hey, if you learned something or if this was helpful in any way, please hit the subscription and notification bells. It really helps keep our channel going. Stay safe, be creative. We'll catch you guys in the next video.